Good evening, everyone. This is Van Herndon. I was uh, given the honor of being invited to speak to a group of people this evening, December the 24th, 2018, um, Christmas Eve, and uh, I was asked to speak on um, inspiring words under the larger theme of celebrating Jesus. And uh, so I uh, tried to uh, craft a message that uh, uh, I thought I'd share with you here as well and just uh, uh, try to get it in as many ears as possible. And uh, I hope that you find it beneficial. And may you have a Merry Christmas. And uh, one last thought uh, before I hit play on that is, uh, forgive me for the sound quality. Um, I wasn't tied into their system. I simply recorded it on the uh, equipment I had available, which was my phone. So, uh, But I think you can hear it well enough. And, and again, I wish you happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Thank you for listening. For over 2,000 years. Wow. What a difference it can, a life can make. Right now, I'd like to uh, welcome back up here one of my favorite folks, Mr. Van Hearn. You want this on the stand, he's going to hang on to it. Here, you're like me, you don't like being tied down too well. Thank you, Once again, I bid you all good evening. I've been asked to speak tonight concerning our theme of celebrating Jesus. And I've been asked to discuss specifically some inspiring words. And when I think of inspiring words, the first thing that I want that comes to mind is the inspired word of God. That holy script that he has given us, the Holy Bible. And so tonight I'll be sharing with you some thoughts. Because from the very beginning, our Father has had a plan. His love for us has been from the very beginning. The cornerstone of that love being His Son. God in the flesh, on earth, who understands through experience man's trials. His Son, who is our mediator with the Father. His Son, who paid our debts. As you know, this is the time of year that the world has chosen to celebrate His birth. Let us take a moment to look to God's holy word to, to find inspiration, to glorify our Father, to honor that precious gift of His Son, His birth, His life, and yes, His death and resurrection. You don't have to go very far into the Bible. It's in the first book in Genesis where we find that God is already beginning to lay forth the foundation of this gift when He makes a promise to Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, we read, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you... All the families of the earth shall be blessed. We're laying the foundation for Jesus' arrival in that covenant that He makes with Abraham. Later, when Abraham proved his faith, God again foreshadowed the blessing that we celebrate this night. In Genesis 22, verse 18, In your seed all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Fourteen generations after Abraham, God was still mindful of and working towards His promise. Where we read in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 through 13, When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body, and I will establish His kingdom." He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne for his kingdom forever. Our father through the prophet Isaiah tells us nearly 700 years before his arrival how our Savior will be brought into this world. We read in chapter 7 verse 14 of Isaiah, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. 
and shall call his name Emmanuel. And that prophecy was fulfilled in what Bo read for us earlier in Matthew chapter 1, verse 22. Our Father continues through the prophet Micah, telling us 400 years before our Savior Christ Jesus is born, that He shall be born in a town called Bethlehem. Micah chapter 5, verse 2, But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are little among thousands of Judah, Yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from of old, from everlasting. Let us find inspiration that over the span of hundreds of years and numerous generations, our Father kept His promise and delivered to us a Savior who would deliver us from our transgressions. Friends, we can not only find inspiration of the promise of Jesus' coming, but also in His life and His teachings. Our Lord gave us a goal for which to aim when He said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew chapter 6. Verses 19 and 21. Further, our Lord tells us that our Father will provide. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all of these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Matthew chapter 6. With the turmoils we face, He who we celebrate this night tells us that He gives us true rest. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Also, our Savior has given us the recipe for earthly happiness and, more important, eternal joy. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. This is the first commandment, and the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Just think about the earthly joy that that would give us if we would just remember those two precepts. Love the Lord your God with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And love thy neighbor as thyself. His recipe for eternal joy. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through Him we might be saved. And finally, my friends, we can find inspiration in our Savior's death and resurrection. The inspired writer Paul states, Do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into His death? Therefore we were buried with Him through baptism in death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. Paul yet again tells us, But God, who is rich in mercy because of His great love with, with, with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Ephesians chapter 2. The inspired writer John tells us, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son God, Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God, 1 John chapter 5. So friends, I offer up this thought. Let us find inspiration That Jesus left heaven 
stepping down to the level of man so that he could be the perfect mediator for man with the Father. Let us find inspiration that his actions have made possible the realization of an eternal life of joy. Let us be inspired to honor these things, not with a date on a calendar, but a life of service. And let us be inspired to celebrate our Savior, not by annual gifts from the hands wrapped in paper, but by daily gifts of the heart wrapped in love. Thank you. All right, we're going to do... Uh...